Skana, my name is Diahawi, which means he brings both. I am Turtle Clan of the Mohawk Nation, residing on the Six Nations Reserve in Ontario. I will be reciting the Thanksgiving address in the Cayuga language. It, it, in any gathering, large or small, we give thanks to the Creator for all that He gives us on earth and in the sky. I <laughs> I did not know you, dear Wawani. Yet to know you, how do you know me get to Tiso, yet to know Qua? You said to know you, and they car gaqua, said what that is how to know Qua. Yet to know you, so he car gaqua, Tiso, yet to know Qua. Yet to know you, and Jiso Dasha. You said to know you, skinny dio. Yet to know you, Gaini Hanya, I don't yet can out. You said to know you, some white Diso, Donato, and that Gaini, and get Gayadak, and know you, Donato. In the beginning of the Thanksgiving address, we start by giving thanks to the Mother Earth. On to the thanksgiving to give thanks to all the weeds and medicines. Next, we give thanks to all the fruits, trees, and all the animals. We give thanks to the waters, our sustenance, as well as the winds and grandfather thunders. We give we move on to give thanks to the sun, moon, and stars and leaders. Lastly, we give thanks to our creator, Donito, which means that is all. Thank you. Welcome to the annual section of teacher celebration. My name is Aaron Johnston. I'm the chair of the section of teachers. And this year, the section is in its 41st year of celebrating excellence in teaching and family medicine in Canada. Thank you to you, our preceptors, our teachers, our educators, and our educational leaders for all that you do to support uh, family medicine teaching in Canada. This year, we celebrate virtually for the second year in a row. We recognize that this has been a challenging last couple of years for family medicine teachers across Canada. And in this difficult time, we've heard from you about the challenges that you faced, the innovations that you've developed, the learners that you've inspired, even in these virtual spaces over the past two years. The strength of the section of teachers has always been its people. It's teachers who work together, who face challenges together, who share laughter together. I feel privileged to be a part of this and to be among you tonight. Tonight is all about you. It's about us saying thank you to you for what you do as a teacher. It is about recognizing talented new and future teachers, as well as those of you who have taught for many years. Although our event, event is virtual tonight, I hope that you'll have an opportunity to see some familiar faces, to laugh together, to share your stories of teaching and being taught with one another. The section of teachers is a place where good people connect. And although we are not together in person, I believe that this innovative group will come together to celebrate this amazing community tonight. I wish you a good night and I thank you for all that you do. Welcome to our annual celebration of excellence in family medicine teaching. I'm Joe Varaghiz and I will be one of your MCs for this evening. A sincere thanks to Samantha Hill from McMaster and her family for providing our special opening. And thank you, Aaron, our section of teachers chair for taking over the SOT council torch from James Geertsen. Although we continue to celebrate virtually, we have lots of surprises and enter entertainment in store as we attempt to recreate the SOT magic with all of you. And what would this evening be without a little joy, a lot of laughter, and some reflection on what this past year has thrown at us? I hope you can have taken the time to don some of your best socks and party threads. Please feel free to snap some of your pics about how you're celebrating with us. Email us our pics at the address in the chat by 7.30 Eastern time, so we can show a reel of this wonderful community at the end of the event and feel a bit more like we're together again. Now, over to my co-host, Suda Kobla. Merci, Jobin, et bienvenue tout le monde à une soirée de célébration des enseignants, superviseurs et leaders pédagogiques. Une célébration de vous tous. Hello, everyone. If you're feeling extra festive, Post your pictures on social media with the hashtag FM teaching. Show some love across Canada by connecting with your peers in the chat box and stick around for a special interactive after party at the end of the formal part of the evening 
to join your colleagues in games of skill, games of intellect, and let loose and chat with your colleagues and really show off your socks. And now I'd like to pass it over to our friend, Dr. Francine Lemire, CFPC's CEO and Executive Director. Merci, Suda. Good evening, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Bonne soirée. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this very special celebration of family medicine teaching. Cette soirée est donc une célébration de vous tous. J'aimerais aussi reconnaître les étudiants et les résidents qui reçoivent un prix ce soir. Vous représentez l'avenir de la section des enseignants et nous sommes ravis de vous avoir parmi nous. Today is also Remembrance Day. It is important that we take the time to honor and remember all soldiers who perform military service, whether they were fighting on the front lines or ensuring that those in battle had the support they needed. The Section of Teachers event is always a big highlight at FMF, and I'm so pleased that so many of you have been able to join us from across the country. I'd like to congratulate all of the recipients as well as all of the families who are sitting in the audience. Your support inspires all of us. I wish you a wonderful evening and hope to see many of you at the after party. I will now pass it over to our newly minted president, Dr. Brady Bouchard. Good evening, everyone. I'm proud to be with you tonight for one of my first official events as president of the College of Family Physicians of Canada. I would like to thank my predecessor, Dr. Dr. Kathy Chervin, for all of her contributions over this past year. The section of teachers community is an important one at the CFBC. It helps to bring together teachers, preceptors, and educational leaders from across Canada to share, collaborate, and support one another. And occasionally there's dancing involved. I encourage all of our rising stars and new and practice family physicians to join this community, which is as simple as checking off your interest in SOT in your CFPC membership portal. Tonight, we will be celebrating those who have made outstanding contributions to family medicine education and recognizing some of the future leaders in our field. But first, I wanna thank each and every one of you for your contributions to the future of family medicine. Your work with learners as teachers, preceptors, and educational leaders is the catalyst to the betterment and strength of family medicine across Canada. I hope you have a wonderful time today and I look forward to celebrating with you. I will now invite to the virtual podium, Dr. Jeanette Boyd, Chair of the Board of the Foundation for Advancing Family Medicine. Thank you, Brady, and good evening, everyone. I'm delighted to be with here, here with you tonight on behalf of the Foundation for Advancing Family Medicine. And I congratulate you all for your accomplishments in advancing family medicine through excellence in teaching and education. Family medicine education is the foundational experience for family physicians. Whether you supervise one student a year, mentor residents, or manage an entire site or program, you play an important role in nurturing excellence in family medicine. Tonight, we cheer together and loudly for everyone who delivers family medicine education and for everyone who receives critical education and training. It is your perseverance, adaptability, and leadership abilities that have shone through the unexpected challenges of the ongoing pandemic. Supporting these qualities in family medicine education has never been more important. The Foundation is proud to support the people and the work of the section of teachers, all made possible by the financial contributions by those who believe in the impact of this work. Most notably, our corporate sponsors, Scotiabank and MD Financial Management, and many of you generous CFPC members and community supporters. Tonight, I ask you to commit your support to this important work as part of the Foundation's annual end of year campaign. The funds we raised last year with your contributions supported, supported the expansion of the scholarly work in family medicine education grant, doubling the amount of the grant to increase its impact advancing family medicine education. As part of this year's fundraising campaign, we are aiming to raise $25,000 to expand the family medicine education fund that sustains many section of teachers initiatives. Our goal is to further enhance the impact of the scholarly work in family medicine education grant by ensuring its longevity with the establishment of an endowment fund. I encourage you to give generously to support family medicine education. 
We have made it easy as always for you to donate from your home on the FAFM secure donation page. The link to donate is posted in the chat. To target your donation, please select Family Medicine Education Fund. And thank you so much. And once again, congratulations to tonight's award recipients. Everyone, I'm James Skirtson and uh, a member of the section of Teachers Executive. Wonderful for all of you to join us as we celebrate family medicine education together. As many of you know, I'm the sock guy. And the tradition as always, is if you give a donation of $500 or more tonight, uh, I'll go out and buy some special socks for you and be reassured your sock size will not be revealed to any of your colleagues or teachers. To thank and acknowledge our many donors from last year, some of them who will be showing off their socks tonight. Last year, we raised nearly $20,000 and a special thanks to Brady Bouchard, our incoming uh, CFPC president for his donation. That allowed me to buy socks for his entire family. Goal tonight is to raise $20,000 or more as we want to ensure that the scholarly work in family medicine grant continues for many years. Your donations along with previous year's donations uh, will allow us to create an endowment. We hope that uh, you'll continue to give uh, money tonight uh, generously. And now back to our celebration of family medicine teaching and the presentation to award recipients. Thank you, James, and I can't wait to see all of those socks in person one day. As a direct result of your contributions, the scholarly work in Family Medicine Education Grant has doubled in value, and this year we were able to award $10,000. As last year's recipient of the grant, thank you, I'm personally decided to announce that, uh, I'm pers personally delighted to announce that this year's Award recipient is Dr. Navshir Gill Tour from the University of Toronto. For her project, are the Department of Family and Community Medicine graduates at the University of Toronto ready for the real world? A pilot curriculum for practice management training. Congratulations to you, Navshir, and a huge virtual round of applause. Next year, this could be you. So please donate generously and thank you for supporting Family Medicine Education scholarly activity. And I'll now pass again to Franzen. Merci Souda. Et maintenant nous arrivons à l'une de mes parties préférées de la soirée. Un hommage aux leaders émergents. Les bourses pour les résidents en médecine de famille et les bourses d'études pour les étudiants en médecine sont décernés par la Fondation pour l'avancement de la médecine familiale grâce au généreux soutien de Gestion financière MD et la Banque Scotia. Félicitations aux récipiendaires de cette année. From the University of British Columbia, Mouch, uh, Mahin Mouchtaba and Anna Ellis. From the University of Alberta, Monique Jarrett, and Catherine Palme. From the University of Calgary, Alexis Kadzel and Catherine Sutherland. From the University of Saskatchewan, Sarah Choi and Jessica Freilich. From the University of Manitoba, Mindley Eklov and Katrina Leong. From Western University, Obaidullah Khan and Julia Peta. From McMaster University, Claire Bodkin and Roya Agbari. From the Northern Ontario School of Medicine, Nicholas Roscoe and Felicia Lotzios. From the University of Toronto, Vivian Tam and Yusuf Ahmed. From Queen University, Benjamin Morrow and Julia Robson.
from the University of Ottawa, Julia Butman and Adam Chubbs Payne. De l'Université de Sherbrooke, Ségolène Chaillon Monarque et Jessica Vanderbore. De l'Université de Montréal, Camille Couture et Émilie Labbé. From McGill University, Aislinn Wang and Nico Mirati. De l'Université Laval, Philippe Simon et Léa Dancos Lavoie. From Dalhousie University, Jillian Jung and Jenna McLeod. From Memorial University, Robert McCarthy and Ixvaku Mishra. We are also delighted to present the Indigenous Medical Student Scholarship and Indigenous Resident Scholarship, both selected from among the 17 Canadian medical schools. Congratulations to this year's recipients, Kate Elliott and Sarah Douglas, both from the University of British Columbia. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bonjour à tous. Au nom de la Banque Scotia et de Gestion Financière MD, j'ai l'honneur de féliciter les lauréats des bourses d'études pour les étudiants et les résidents en médecine de cette année, y compris des bourses pour les étudiants et les résidents autochtones. Vous êtes aux premières étapes de votre carrière et vous avez déjà un sens impressionnant du leadership et de l'engagement envers le bien-être de votre communauté. I've read your many accomplishments and I'm confident that the future of healthcare in Canada is in very good hands. I'd particularly like to take a moment to thank all of you who are committed to addressing the disparity in health outcomes between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. This is an area in which Indigenous people have long been underserved, and I'm glad to see efforts being made to change this. Congratulations again to each of you. You're an inspiration for all future students in family medicine, for your teachers and mentors, for your families and friends, and for all of us witnessing your accomplishment. Je vous souhaite succès dans tout ce que vous entreprendrez. Merci. Congratulations to our wonderful student and resident recipients. We look forward to seeing you as family medicine teachers and continue your leadership journey. We are at the midpoint of our evening tonight and a small reminder for each of you to please consider donating to the Family Medicine Education Fund using the uh, link posted in the chat. We're really looking forward to seeing your sock selfies online and posting them under the hashtag Family Medicine Teaching. As you know, when you donate $500, you'll have the opportunity to wear your own personal and special socks at next year's celebration, selected by yours truly. And so far tonight, we've raised $9,000. We're almost at the midway point. Special thanks to some of our $500 donors, Jeanette Boyd, Ivy Owen Anderson, Francine Lemaire, Alain Papineau, Keith Wilson, Aaron Johnson, Brady Bouchard, and JP Arsenault. Thank you so much and hoping you will continue to no donate uh, and please keep those donations coming in. Thank you. Thank you, James. Or should we call you the sock whisperer? It is now my pleasure to present the Val Rackless Leadership in Me Family Medicine Award generously sponsored by the doctor, by Dr. Val Rackless as part of the Foundation for Advancing Family Medicine Honors and Awards Program. This award recognizes a senior vet family medicine resident who has demonstrated outstanding academic, research, communication, and leadership, and who is recognized as a future leader in, this, in our discipline. This year's recipient is Dr. Kate Elliott from the University of British Columbia who is being recognized for her tremendous leadership and advocacy 
and research, particularly in Indigenous health. Having just started her career as a family physician, Dr. Kate Elliott has already made a significant impact on strengthening equitable access to healthcare. She's a proud member of the Métis Nation of Greater Victoria. With a strong interest in supporting Indigenous health healthcare initiatives, Dr. Elliott compl is completing her residency in Indigenous Family Medicine at the University of British Columbia's Faculty of Medicine and is the program's lead uh, resident lead. She also holds the positions of Minister of Métis Women and Gender Equ Equity and Minister of M Mental Health with M Métis Nation British Columbia. Dr. Elliott is also Vice Chair of the South Island Division of Family Practice, working with Victoria Cool Aid Society. She provides care to patients living with homelessness, food insecurity, mental health challenges, and addictions. Through numerous academic projects, publications, and presentations, Dr. Elliott shares her passion for community health with the broader community. Congratulations, Dr. Elliott. Tansy, my name is Kate Elliott. I'm a member of Métis Nation of Greater Victoria. I am a newly graduated uh, family physician working out of uh, Kool-Aid in the Victoria Native Friendship Centre. Um, I'm very grateful to be nominated and considered for this award. I understand there's lots of amazing candidates. Um, I think leadership and change and advocacy takes many different uh, forms. Uh, throughout uh, family practice and was very excited to be nominated. Um, I think my my biggest role as a family physician is to be there, form that therapeutic relationship with my patients, um, and hopefully begin to rebuild and establish trust with the healthcare system. Um, I have so many people uh, to thank and can attribute to me um, finishing residency and kind of making it across, across the finish line. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the Kool-Aid Clinic and all the support that they've provided me over my residency, as well as my preceptors, uh, Dr. Frank Nizzel and Dr. Amy Berceau. Um, I have had nothing uh, but support and amazing opportunities over the course of my residency. I'd also like to thank Val Arnaud Peltier uh, for all of her support in getting me through this, the first finish line of medical school at the University of Saskatchewan. Also would like to thank my friends and family and my, my home community of Meeting Nation of Greater Victoria. Congratulations. Now for our next performance, we would like to welcome Dr. Volker Rinnen Insland from Saskatchewan. His lyrical prowess and musical talent reminds us of the simplicity and impact of instrument and song to soothe our pandemic weary souls. Take it away Volker. This song is dedicated to all the residents learning in this dangerous time. Ain't it always different than you think? Circumstances changing everything. Residency thought you had it made Then the COVID rain on your parade You were learning in a dangerous time Yes, we're learning in a dangerous time You were smart, learned how to adjust Telephone consults were a must. Answered COVID questions everyone would ask. And of course you had to wear a mask. You were learning in a dangerous time. Yes, we Out of your classroom. All your lectures had to be on Zoom. All of you helped with the vaccination. 
And at the end you got your education Yes, we're learning In a dangerous time Yes, we're Make it into graduated. Didn't get the bug and now you're vaccinated. You'll be successful going all so far. And you won't be wear a mask in OR. Yes, you're learning in a dangerous time. We're all Merveilleux, Volker et merci. Maintenant, j'ai le plaisir de reconnaître notre prochaine lauréate, le prix Jim Ruderman pour le leadership en médecine familiale universitaire est nommé en honneur de Dr. Jim Ruderman, qui a été chef du département de médecine familiale de l'hôpital Women's College à Toronto de 1992 à 2014. Ce prix reconnaît une médecine de, de famille canadienne, canadienne remarquable qui travaille en milieu universitaire et qui perso personnifie les qualités qui ont fait du Dr. Ruderman, un leader aussi exceptionnel. La sagesse, le calme, la compassion ainsi que la capaci capacité d'attirer et prendre sous son aile des personnes talentueuses et de préparer à faire part, partie d'une une équipe dynamique et productive. I am pleased to announce that Dr. Olivia Nguyen from the University of Montreal is this year's recipient. Since she began her career more than a decade ago, Dr. Olivia Nguyen has earned a reputation as a compassionate physician with unparalleled listening skills and limitless empathy. Her compassion, which is recognized equally by patients, hospital staff, and peers, is just one of the qualities she possesses that are indispensable to the provision of palliative care. Throughout her career, Dr. Nguyen has been committed to strengthening palliative care in her community by, among other things, sharing knowledge, promoting better integrated care, and enhancing communication with different teams and with patients. Because of her deep knowledge of the needs of patients requiring palliative care and through the application of best practices, she is a strong leader who unites and positively influences all stakeholders involved in providing care to this special patient population. Félicitations, Dr. Nguyen. Je m'appelle Olivia Nguyen, je suis médecin de famille depuis 2009 et je travaille au nord de la ville de Montréal, au sus nord de l'île de Montréal. Honnêtement, je suis vraiment honorée d'être reconnue comme ça par mes collègues et, et par mes pères, surtout que je travaille avec des gens qui sont vraiment incroyables et merveilleux. En soins palliatifs, tout est, est, est l'équipe. Je veux dire, sans l'équipe, on n'est on, on rien, ça ne fonctionne pas. Donc, et je suis entourée d'une équipe franchement exceptionnelle avec des gens brillants qui font, qui font des choses exceptionnelles, qui sont reconnus, qui présentent, qui ont aussi beaucoup d'intérêts autres que la médecine que ce soit mes collègues médecins, mais aussi infirmières, gestionnaires, pharmaciens. Donc d'être ainsi reconnue, je trouve ça vraiment euh, une marque euh, de confiance ou d'honneur incroyable. Je suis très reconnaissante. J'aimerais remercier tous mes collègues qui ont contribué à ma demande de prix. J'aimerais remercier Dr. Bobby Bergeron qui m'a nominée. Mes, 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 mes mentors aussi, les gens à l'université, ma directrice de programme qui m'a beaucoup aidée dans mon cheminement, qui est toujours là pour me soutenir. Même la direction de l'hôpital, en fait, qui, qui m'a aidée à faire avancer mes projets, à avoir une vision commune pour améliorer les soins aux patients en médecine palliative. Les gestionnaires avec qui je travaille, tous les intervenants de l'équipe, je suis en train de faire une maîtrise en gestion 
pour le moment et, et tous les participants de la cohorte et les organisateurs sont incroyables et je pense m'aident à, à devenir une meilleure personne en fait, un meilleur médecin, un meilleur gestionnaire. Donc je suis très reconnaissante de tout le monde qui m'entoure et ma famille qui me tolère avec tous mes projets dans ma tête. Félicitations. It is now my honor to present the Oscar of the evening, the highest honor for family medicine teaching in Canada, the Ian McWinney Family Medicine Education Award, named in memory of Dr. Ian McWinney, a family physician, a clinician, a teacher, a researcher, and an author who influenced our understanding of what it means to be a family physician in our Canadian context and around the world. The award honors excellence in family medicine education and is presented to a teacher of family medicine deemed by their peers to have made unique and innovative contributions with a significant national impact on the development of family medicine education in Canada. Funding for the award is generously provided by the CFPC's Foundation of Advancing Family Medicine and the Ian McWinney Endowment Fund. This year's recipient is Dr. Helen Batty from the University of Toronto. Dr. Batty has received many awards in family medicine teaching and faculty development and has contributed significantly to educating Canada's future physicians in building capacity among academic family medicine educators. She served as a founding director of several family medicine faculty, faculty development and master's degree programs at University of Toronto including co-founding the Five Weekend National Family Medicine Fellowship Program. Launched in 1994, this unique program counts several CFPC presidents among its alumni. Dr. Batty has also designed and implemented many other ongoing family medicine programs at U of T that support interprofessional education and collaboration, including the Masters of Public Health in Family Me and Community Medicine Program, the Masters of Science and Community Health Program, among many more. Beyond her national and local impact, Dr. Batty's work in family medicine and faculty development has influenced the development of primary care in Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Thailand, and Japan. The foundational role of Dr. McWinney's vision of family medicine is reflected in Dr. Batty's work with fellowship and graduate programs. Learners attending her seminar series participate in weekly chapter by chapter reading of his textbook of family medicine. Class discussions focus on the importance of generalism in medical education, patient-centered continuity of care, and the pivotal role of family medicine in the healthcare system. Given her decades long commitment to the Dr. McWinney's groundbreaking work in family medicine, the Ian McWinney Family Medicine Education Award is a particularly fitting honor. Congratulations, Dr. Helen Batty. This recognition, uh, receiving the Ian McWinney Award, uh, for me is really a dream come true, um, especially exactly for the reasons that your question brought forward, which is I was nominated by my peers and my colleagues and my friends at Women's College Hospital and the University of Toronto. And I'm actually, as far as I can tell, the first winner of this award from the University of Toronto. So it, it means a huge, huge um, deal to me. Um, I, I was in tears, literally, when Aaron Johnston called me at the end of July. Yes, well, certainly I'd, I'd like to thank Aaron Johnston, who called me. Um, that was such a wonderful phone call for me to receive. Uh, and of course, the Council of the Section of Teachers. Um, it's, it's hard to know where to start uh, within the college itself. Certainly James Gertson, and I want to tell James I am not wearing the Christmas socks he sent me. I understood that cat socks were not available anywhere because they're so popular. That's why I was hoping he would find me some. I am wearing a good sturdy pair of navy blue little old lady supportos. So, Anyway, James has been a great supporter of all of our programs for decades and decades. Um, in the old days, Cal Gutkin, Ivy O. Anderson, still Bernie Marlowe, uh, once again in the past, Paul Rainsbury, all from the section of teachers. I am actually one of those 50 people who are founding members of the section of teachers from the Montebello 
conference, so uh, I could list long lists. What I'd like to say to the teachers in the audience is, who do you go to when you've got an innovative, in my case, sometimes slightly odd, crazy, eccentric idea? Start at the top, go to your chair, because chairs, if they're smart, have flexible budgets. And there's sometimes just a little bit of money they can find to kind of start off a pilot project. So every chair at the University of Depart uh, University of Toronto Department of Family Medicine that I ever worked to has always been generous in supporting in kind or in very small amounts of clerical money, uh, you know, whatever support. And that has made a huge difference. Similarly, hospital chiefs in our system actually have bigger, better budgets than the chair does. So every chief I ever worked with, and the most current one is Ruth Heisey, always supportive, always interested in education, faculty development, uh, and all the various program directors over the years. Um, there's some people I really want to thank because they might be listening. Um, so I'm not sure any more of the college staff are listening, but uh, I can think of uh, 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 on my French, uh, I'm embarrassed to show in public, um, but I would say my my chers and me, uh, among the francophones, and so many of them have taught me so much, uh, is Danielle Saussier, who was my date for many of these dinners over the years. Um, who else? Viola Anteo, who's now quite active in faculty development nationally and at the college. Uh, and and was so kind to, I think, shepherd this nomination through. And my my intellectual co colleagues and supports from Women's College Hospital, Nicholas Pimlot, editor of the journal, uh, Carol Katai, and uh, Carrie Schramm, once a student and, and now a colleague. So those are people very directly. Uh, otherwise, Risa Freeman is another big person that comes to mind, David White. Um, and, and I have to thank, so I'm kind of going around in a circle here, Eve Talbot, can I finish with a challenge? I think we have a challenge and it has to do with the certificates of additional competence and I might not quite have the right name. Uh, one of the very first was the certificate in women's health, came out of the Women's Health Scholars Program that I did found and direct for a few years. So I've got nothing against extra competencies. And I know that the certificates are necessary. What I'm worried is the core is hollow. It feels to me like a donut. I would love to see an academic fellowship in family medicine. So beyond the two-year residency that most of us have, or three-year residency if you're lucky, People can, if they're academically inclined, read more of McQuinney, look more at the world of Wonka, um, get familiar with our essential principles and the definition of our specialty. And yes, become leaders, become researchers, become specially interested teachers. But I, I would love to see the academic fellowship revitalized and revitalized, not just in Toronto, where I think it's kind of happening, and I'm delighted, but also in all the other departments across the year, it's really handy to have a third year fellow who could shadow the chief or help on people's research or spend time doing McWinney textbook based or Gail Stevens or any of those great writers in family medicine to look at our own journals, to look at our own publications, because there are plenty of them now. Um, so that would be one of my hopes for the future based on the amount of fun and I think the overall successful outcomes we've seen so many of the U of T programs. Congratulations, Helen, and thank you for your key contributions to family medicine education in Canada. Now, back by popular demand, we are delighted to have Drs. Shelley Ross, Lynn Sonnenberg, Roshan uh, Abraham, and new this year, Drs. Dina Hamza and Keith Wilson perform the part four of their now infamous medical education skit. In case you're wondering, yes, we do love to showcase our family, our uh, talented CFPC members whenever and however we can. So if you play an instrument, dance, sing, do acrobats, uh, tell jokes, please let us know and we'd love to showcase you next year. Now, 
Sit back and enjoy. Look, hello everyone and welcome to the Family Medicine Residency Program Dating Game where candidates meet the training programs of their dreams. Now, let's have our contestants introduce themselves and then our candidate, Dina, can ask some questions to find out that ideal training program match. Here we go. How about program number one? Hi, Dina. My name is Perfect Program, and I'm located in Desirable City. We have fantastic preceptors and excellent patients. We are looking for residents who are the best of the best, because we're worth it, and so are you. Look, that is great program number one. How about over to you, program number two? Hello, Dina. My name is Average Program, and I'm so glad to talk to you. Our training will prepare you just fine to be a good family physician. We really can't do anything about the weather in this city, but we have lots of fun things to do in the cold. We are looking for residents who are willing to put up with the weather to get some good training. Well, look, thank you, program number two. Program number three, please introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Underdog Program. We're looking for residents who want a solid training experience. We're located in city you underestimate. We're so excited to talk to you. Well, there you have it. Three contestants for Dina to consider. And now, Dina, are you ready to ask your questions? Let's start the residency program dating game. Program number one. What car would best represent the learning environment in your program? Oh, our learning environment is absolutely a Tesla. We're ahead of everyone and very desirable. Program number two, same question. I would say that the learning environment here is like a Toyota Camry. It isn't flashy, but you can rely on it when you need to get to where you need to go. How about you, program number three? You asked about learning environment, right? We would be a second-hand Volvo. Maybe not much to see at first glance, but you will be safe and taken care of. This question is for all of you. If you could be any animal, what would you be and why? Program number three, you go first. Oh gosh, we're probably a rescue dog. <laughs> you were not sure what you're getting, but we will turn out to be a great decision. Program number one. We are a lion, powerful and king of the jungle. Program number two. I think we are a golden retriever. We are friendly and we want to be your best friend. Program number three. What is your theme song? It's an ABBA song for sure. Probably take a chance on me. <laughs> Program number two. What do you have that no one else does? Well, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but we have a lot of preceptors who are complete pushovers when it comes to assessment. Well, that is really good to know. Mm -hmm. Program number one, are you easily offended? What? No, why? Did someone say something? This is gonna be a really hard choice. Program number two, please be as convincing as possible and tell me why I should rank you as my first choice. Well, we treat you well, we prepare you for the kind of practice that you really want to do, and we will do everything we can to get you to stay in our province and join our other graduates. Program number three, how about you? Well, honestly, if you rank us, you're guaranteed to be accepted. We rank everyone who applies here. We just really, really, really want to fill round one. But aside from that, we can give you a great experience and lots of our graduates decide to stick around and teach with us. We think that says a lot about our program. And program number one, convince me to rank you first. You know, Dina, we are quite picky. Lots of candidates want to come here. We are the best program in the country. Maybe you should convince me about why we should rank you. Well, Dina, it's now time for you to make your selection. Which program will it be? You know, it really is a tough decision. Each of the programs has good points and bad points. 
I think it would be really great to get accepted at program one. They really are known as the very best program and it'd be so terrific to live in desirable city, but I'm not sure that program number one really convinced me that they're interested in me as a person. Mm -hmm. Program number two sounds fun and I really liked what program two had to say. And program three is one that I really only applied to as a backup. But now that I've talked to them, it sure sounds like they would treat me well. It is such a hard decision. Wow, it sure is hard to decide your ranking, Dina. But it's time to send everything into CARMS. So what is your rank list? Oh gosh, it is so scary to make a decision, but I guess it will have to be third rank program number two, sorry. And it is such a hard choice between the other two programs, but I'm just going to have to go with my heart. Program number three, you are my first choice. Well, there you have it, folks. Our candidate has decided to rank her list. Stay tuned for the follow-up show, Match Day, coming in March 2022. That's it for now. The after party? Oh, sorry. I, I was just getting ready for the after party. Trying to figure out what socks to wear. Do I wear the more formal ones tonight, Pierre? Or maybe the fun ones. Ah, oh, sorry, back, back, back to the show. A big thanks for all of our further donors tonight. Many of you are my friends and all of you will be my friends in the future. Christy Newton, all of you new in. Ian Scott, yes, Ian Scott, former member of the section of teachers executive. Jennifer Hall, Jennifer, do we need socks for those cycle, cycle, cycle shoes and bike that you have? Amanda Condon, Kathy Chervin. Oh, Kathy, another pair of socks for Christmas. You're on my list. Brent Korn, Michael Green, Lenora Lola, Ed Wyman, the who's who of family medicine in Canada, Clayton Dick, Paul Humphreys, Sherry Bethune. Sherry, are you a, a Northern Ontario wannabe? I can never quite figure out. Are you living in the Newfoundland or are you in Northern Ontario? Where are your alliances? We have a new Dean, you know. Amy Davis. No, Sasha Seeley. Thank you so much. We've raised over $16,500. We just need another five grand to match last year's donations. And you can donate all the way up to December 31st. I can't buy you socks if you donate on December 31st. I've done my Christmas shopping already. So consider donating tonight if you really want those socks. And there is still time tonight. Maybe we can put the link in the uh, after hour. All right, uh, let's start. I want to start making my plans back to, oh, Francine, before I give it back to you, thank you for donating on a regular basis. I won't tell anyone your sock size, but we did, we did fit you out with some beautiful cross-country socks in the last couple of years. Over to you, Francine. Indeed, James, you have fitted me with some great socks, and I do look forward to the 2021 pair of socks. So thank you all for coming. And just before I pass it back to Suda and Jobin, I wanted to acknowledge their great work tonight, congratulate all of the exceptional winners, and thank the donors. It has been a fantastic evening of friends, colleagues, and celebration. We hope that you've been enjoying your virtual FMF experience and that you will join us tomorrow morning at 9.55 Eastern for our keynote presentation, Without Compassion, There Is No Healthcare, presented by Dr. Brian Hodges. Uh, des photos de remerciement nous parviennent de partout au pays. Nous sommes ravis que vous soyez parmi nous et que vous partagez les façons dont vous célébrez votre communauté vos pères et vos collègues. Nous avons assemblé un court montage de toutes les belles photos que vous nous avez envoyées.
Merci à tous and many thanks to you all for joining us tonight for this wonderful virtual celebration. And as usual, even when apart, SOT has proven to be a community that knows how to support one another and have some fun. We appreciate each and every one of you and thank you for being here. We hope to see many of you in the after party very shortly for an interactive experience like no other. We have games, we have songs, we have trivia, and we have lots of opportunities for you to flex your fun muscles and earn some serious bragging rights. We even have socks, right, James? A link is being posted in the chat, which will whisk you into the state of the art weave platform. Our games will be hosted by professionals so we can let loose and have some fun together. We promise you're going to be left laughing. We'll play a round of games and then open up the room for some informal connections and chit chat. And this is a great, a great chance to get to know your colleagues from across Canada in a fun and informal and slightly competitive oh setting. Head. The games are best played on your laptop using headphones and a webcam on Chrome, Firefox, or Edge browsers. And one final tip, turn off your VPN to maximize your internet. No need to download any software, just click the link in a few moments and see you there. Over to Jobin. Thanks, Sutha. On behalf of the SOT, a huge congratulations to all of our award recipients. Thank you to all the amazing donors for each of your contrib contributions. Special thanks for our artists and entertainers and all the staff working in the background to make this event happen. A special thanks to our reviewers who are instrumental in helping us choose our award recipients. Finally, heartfelt appreciation to the teachers, preceptors, and educational leaders who continue to enhance family medicine education in Canada. Remember, please be kind. Be calm, stay safe, stay positive, test negative, and we'll see you at the after party.